Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Uh, well, it's been two weeks since the last news show we did. Um, as I say, a lot of you, obviously, the forum will know we closed for the week last week because we were away with Snap Charity. We all went off to Santa Ponza in Mallorca. Had a great week with the kids. Everybody thoroughly loved it and everything else. So back to work this week. Uh, as you can imagine, we got a lot of wash to sort out and get all the wash back online and everything else because obviously we didn't manufacture last week. So that took up a bit of it. Uh, and then really just getting back into it, answering all the emails, um, any problems everybody had with subscriptions, everything else like that. So I think we're basically on top of everything now. There may be just one or two emails still sorting out. If you have emailed me and you haven't got a response, send it again because I might have deleted it by accident because I did have 138 when I counted them all up of emails to go through when I was away. So anyway, we um, obviously finished the Phantom last week and to be honest, it's in, on display at the moment somewhere so I can't actually show it. But it, uh, it is all finished and we've probably got some photos up here uh, of it going through. It was a great build and something we did totally different. Normally when we do the video builds, we said before, I tend to try and explain really the easiest way to put a kit together and to make it look good and that's really the whole point of me doing all of these and then basically working with the Corsair and with the Phantom it gave me a chance to do what I like is where I can turn around and say well I'm going to change it I'm going to rip the spine off the Phantom uh, and put fueling lines in down the sides open up the engine put some LEDs in it uh, and things like that so it was great to do that and I think everybody thoroughly enjoyed the way it went it's a mammoth thing it's six and a half hours of video on that plus I took somewhere in the region about 300 stills of it as well during the build so it is quite a, a massive thing to sort of go through with the editing and everything else so and also it's so big I don't think we're going to be able to put it on a DVD to release it as a DVD because otherwise it's going to have to go on three DVDs so I don't know how that's going to quite work yet um, so anyway because everyone sort of liked it I'm going to continue that one on so the next build I'll be doing will be this so if I just move some of these out of the way will be this one now as you've probably all seen this one it's been around for a little bit now this is uh, academies um, they did the C version obviously the old A as well and they come along and they've retooled and revamped up their their ones into the two-seater now this is the Suffer or the Storm F16 I the Israeli ones so it's great because you get the conformal fuel tanks and all the bits and pieces originally I wanted to get on with it when it first came out but I thought well, I'm gonna wait a little while because obviously we were still experimenting with LEDs and lights and I want to like this one up and also it gave a chance for the aftermark people to sort of come along and get going so this particular one I showed you this one the other week um, which is the Wolfpack resin cockpit now what we're going to do with this particular kit is we're going to do something a little bit different my plan is literally as you see it on the box in the takeoff configuration or the landing that's what I'm going to do. We're going to have a bit of runway and we're going to have it blurred as if it's moving and then between myself and Marco sorting me out with the LEDs everything that's going to go in this we're going to completely light up the cockpit so all the multi-function display screens the CRTs they'll be lit up and um, we'll have the nav lights on the side lit up nose wheel light we'll obviously have a strobe on the rear wing tip lights so it's all lit up as if it's really flying so we're not going to be opening up panels on this one but what we will be doing is obviously giving it to make it look like it's in flight and if I can get it to work I'm going to put some LEDs in the back end to make it look like the reheat's lit so when it's taking off and things like that so that's the plan so as I said we're going to go through with the um, Aries cockpit now it probably won't have side instruments lit because looking at the way the resin is on this it's quite thick it's going to be quite troublesome getting in there but I'm going to give it a whirl we've got the Aries wheel well set nicely detailed and everything else and obviously it is correct then for this type of aircraft because there is a few differences to it We've got the Wheeliant, which um, you know basically is designed for the Academy, which has got the main gear because uh, it's different tyres on these, so we've got those as well. Uh, and we've also got um, Israelcast have done a correction set for the actual kit itself because some of the lumps and bumps are wrong or doesn't have them. So this little set um, is quite comprehensive and shows them out. It's got the correct doors on there, the correct lumps and bumps, and a different nose wheel. Now I'm not sure if the nose wheel will be okay in that one, but it's certainly wrong in the kit, and that's why they've changed it. But there is some different air scoops and cooling vents and things like that which are correct. So that's with those. The um, tiers or triple uh, ejection racks that the Israeli F-16s have don't look anything like the Western, the sort of um, the US ones, and obviously that's the US ones it's got in there. So we've got a set of them to go in there as well. 
And last but not least, and these are kit on their own, these are the massive 600 gallon fuel tanks. Now these ones here are vac form, okay? So we'll be doing a little bit of vac form on this build as well, but it's got some resin and photo etch, but these tanks are absolutely massive on this aircraft, but I think it'd be well worth doing it and showing it uh, and things like that. So between it all, it's gonna be a cracking build. I'm starting this one on Monday, because I'm, well, I'm currently working on something else here at the moment, which I'm not allowed to talk about, but you'll see it very shortly. Okay, so we'll get that one sorted. At the same time as doing that one, a lot of people have asked me about doing armour. Now, as you know, armour's not really my bag and everything else, but we have got the um, the SIGs and group builds running, uh, well, the SIG at the moment running on armour, a German, so I'm going to take part and I'm going to have a go at this. Now, there's a full review coming up on this in a moment all about it, um, so I won't go into detail, but basically um, I'm just going to wing it uh, and put this together as per the box but certainly as you'll see in a moment with the review that I've done on this kit it's pretty intense um, and a lot more detailed than everything else so if you want to have a look this is this week's inbox reviews okay welcome to inbox um, this is our first look um, where I haven't even seen what's in the kit so you get my first impressions okay start up with we've got the extra kit um, Hawker Hunter T7 now this is the two seat uh, one now it's 172 scale kit okay so we'll have open up the box not a bad box, um, quite interesting. So last time you might have seen I was complaining about the box doesn't fit and you know that it's loads of room, like the box was huge and there wasn't much in it. This one is actually stuck in the diagonal, it's that tight a fit, it doesn't fit normally. So either somebody was listening or it was one off the last one. Okay, so in here we've got a bag with some resin bits, so you've got two resin uh, ejector seats and an engine nozzle, okay, which is quite nice. Something I hate to see, we've got the clear parts which are not bad, they're not brilliantly clear, we're not as good as some of them, and we've got that little bit of spider webbing as I call it on some of the clear parts as well, which is a bit of a pain, but I'd love to see those in a separate bag, and for the price of you know, a little poly bag, it is a bit of a shame. So okay, the two things we can compare this to is obviously the Revel do their one as well, which is a single seat version, but it's the only one with like recessed panel lines and is a, a relatively modern kit. Now immediately looking at the plastic uh, on this, uh, I have to say I would think the master for this was resin because you can actually see the texture of resin and you've actually got hairs and little bits of surface detail all in this. Now this could have been caused by the mold, the way it was done, but I'm guessing here that this was originally an a resin which was used for the master, just by looking at the texture of the parts. Now the resin itself, uh, the parts themselves are not exactly nice. We're not smooth and crisp. It's sort of a soft molded, so you get this sort of flexibility in the thing. But when you feel it, it's horrible. It's got a real, it's not smooth. Anybody who's used a Hasegawa kit, you'll know exactly what I mean. When it's really crisp, you know, the polish, the parts are almost polished. These are really rough and not nice at all. So you'd have to go around. But also there's loads of scratching on it, which to be honest, would annoy the arse off me because you're gonna to have to go round and buff this guy up because we've got scratches physically in the lower port wing. No, starboard, it's that way up. Starboard wing, if you have a look, you can actually see scratches. Now, I'm assuming this is gonna be on every single other mold because the master is what's gonna have it on. Looking at some of the other surface detail, we don't look too bad. You know, I've seen a lot, lot worse. Okay, we've got some ejector pin marks and things like that, but I don't know, it's just, it's a, a very funny kit. Now there's not much to this one, obviously you've just got two sprues, but we've got, you know, obviously we're talking 172nd. If you've seen some of my latest builds where I've done, you know, scratch building and we've done like this huge uh, phantom and things like that, you know, you'll know I like to go to town with all the scratch building and all the little details, but um, there's not much here. Uh, there's no pretty much uh, cockpit detail whatsoever, but I am amazed at the quality of the plastic. It's awful. Anyway. I diverse. Let's have a look. So let's see what we've got in here. We've got some decals and we've got some other little nice touches in here. So we've got a photo etched, which you managed to stick, fret. So we've got wheel hubs, uh, ejector handles, we've got side instrument panels, we've got the dials uh, on the cockpit and things like that, some windscreen wipers, all in photo etched. That's quite a nice little touch there. We've got the film, the photo, 
film negative for the back of the instrument panel, which will be is a quite a nice touch. So there we go. Immediately we can forget about the cockpit because that will liven it up quite nicely. We've got some blanking plates, obviously for the decals and the decals themselves. Okay, let's see what we've got in here. Usual thing, the lettering's all broken up on these, and the reason it's broken up is because the gear doors are all amongst them, so that little jigsaw piece will honestly make a, a little thing. Now, immediately I'm looking at these and the way they're printed. There's no marking to say whose they are, so I'm assuming it's part of um, Extra Cal or whatever they call themselves. The only thing I will say is that the decals aren't very good because we've got differences in the blue, the registry all seems to be okay, but obviously it's very, very bitty, and the blue looks like it's the wrong blue to me. It looks like it's a little bit too light, but we've certainly got a lot going on on there. So, okay, really, how does this one break down? Well, the kit itself is going to set you back if you're paying full price retail. He is looking just up at his list here where I'm Hawker Hunter, £18.50. So £18.50, um, I'm going to have a rant about this in a minute, uh, but £18.50 isn't so bad because you have got a resin nozzle, engine nozzle, okay, if you can get these back in. Um, you have got a little photo etch fret, so that will take care of it. Is the kit any good? Obviously, I haven't put it together yet, so I can't really comment on the actual uh, integrity of the kit but certainly this plastic is really really weird now if I can get the camera in I'll show you what I mean about this scratching okay if we can get the camera in here to work on but if you look down here if I catch it in the light there we go you can see it just there no, I don't know how well it's going to come on camera but it's scratching all down here really horrible anyway £18.50 for this particular kit. Is it worth it? Well, for a T7, you're pretty limited on your options of what you're going to get. Um, so really, you know, you could spend a little bit more money um, and perhaps go to town. A little bit of scratch building on this will probably make a very, very nice kit. Uh, as I say, you're going to have to rub it down and everything else to make it through. The instructions, uh, as you can imagine, are pretty, pretty basic. As I say, you've got some nice photo etch stuff that's going to go onto those resin seats, so that's very nice. Um, and as I say, the rest of it is pretty much standard going together. I can't really imagine it's going to be too many problems on that. Your markings it comes out of the box with. Um, you've got um, the Honington 1, RF Honington, uh, which is uh, 237 OCU, which is the conversion unit. And I presume this is the Navy one, yeah, which is the Royal Navy, which will be the Yogleton one, which is close to me, which is the T8 version. Um, but so there you go, very nicely done. As I say, just very surprised about the quality. Now, to be honest, I've never built any of their kits before, so I can't comment on how they go together, but I have heard horror stories, certainly about the Harrier and things like that. Um, so there we go. So there's the first one out of the way. £18.50 with a few resin extra bits isn't bad, I must admit. So not so bad on the price on that one. Okay, next up we've got, which is quite an old favourite with a lot of people. Okay, this is the TSR-2. Very famous aircraft that never was um, here in the UK. Now what happened was the 172nd kit was a limited edition run. Okay, so the thing was, obviously they sold out and everybody went out and bought one. Mine the same, I bought two of them uh, and everything else and that was it. Now obviously, now if you go on eBay, they were going for silly money on eBay where people wanted them. So those clever people at Airfix decided to do an anime job on it under the guise I think of, oh, this is for um, the Japanese market. But actually what you get in here is, all this out, quite a nice feature because actually what you get is a stand. You never had this one with the original aircraft. Okay, and then in here, let me just open up a box. We've got all your frets. So if you've ever built the TSR uh, in 172nd, you'll know that you get everything you need for the original kit. So we've got the original cockpit, seats, all the bits and pieces. Okay, we've got the bombs, the intakes, the nozzles, the interior set uh, for the photo uh, reconnaissance as well as the bomber type and everything else. Okay, um, you know, the wings, all these bits. But what you do get is a little extra fret Okay, which is this one is for doing all the anime type things because the cockpit, the way they go in it, they all lie down and things like that and you have this huge missile on the end. So if you want to build it as the anime one, which is if you're into anime, absolutely, you're going to love this particular kit because it does look pretty good when it's done. If you're not, all you do right is throw away this fret and just build it as a TSR straight out of the box. So actually what you've got in here is, 
obviously you've got your markings for building it as an original TSR, or you've got this small bit on the side for doing it as the enemy. Okay, and then when you go through, obviously you've got your markings, or you can do it as enemy. And then obviously when you go through, when you look at the instructions, it shows you them being in the lying down position and things like that. Uh, but it's not, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out how to build it as the TSR type, because here we go, next one down, you've actually got it. Start again for the TSR2, and this will build you a TSR2. So don't think when you see the box that you can't build the TSR2 out of this kit, because you can with no problems at all. So if you did miss out on the original release, and I know there's quite a few of the 148 ones going around now, these really big kits, because to be honest, I have one right above my head, um, everything else, if you do want the 172nd kit, then this is one way of doing it. So a quick one for that. So that one is around at the moment. I can't give you a price on that one, because to be honest, I've lost me a bit of paper for that particular kit, but it's not gonna break the bank at the end of the day. Okay, so next one up. Now, you've seen this one before in a different guise because I've built this one. If you haven't seen it, it's a video build on the site and I super detailed up the engine and opened up some parts and panels and everything else. And I did the US Marine Corps AV-8B. This is the latest version, it's the GR7. Okay, okay, quick history lesson. I don't want to confuse everyone, okay, but the GR7, you have to be careful because this little area up here is called the Lerix, this bit here, okay. Lerix basically is leading edge extension, okay, um, and what happens is you get two flavors. This one they call the 65% Lerix. The easiest way to tell is it's like a plate, it's like a flat piece of plate on there versus what we call the 100% is blended to the top of the wings and you get these frog eyes that come up the top, which are these little pores these little openings on the front and that's how they go now some of the RAF Harriers have the 100% Lerix which comes right the way around the front some of them only have the 65 and it was during their upgrade time the GR9s had obviously that. obviously it's a little bit superfluous all of this because unfortunately the Harrier is no longer in RAF service but if you do want to do the RAF version what this one does it has a different nose more of a pointy nose at the front okay and the thing is we have a missile rail um, down here I know there's other little things as well but then the main things are the missile rail because obviously we get nine hard points on the Harrier versus the Americans only get seven so that's really it so opening up the box as I say we've done this one and there's four reviews on the site I'm not going to churn through all the things decals are pretty much limited you don't get the nice real colorful ones like you get in the AV8B for the Marine Corps ones everything else is gonna be just the same apart from trying to find it here it is this is the one we want Apart from in here, we've got a different sprue. Now this sprue has got the different nose. Now it's a bit pointy and everything else versus over the AV8 one. And obviously you've got little bits that go in the bottom. And the other thing as well, on the underside, you've got the Aiden cannon. This is a cannon. It's not a rotary cannon, um, you know, with multi barrels. This is just one, uh, which has a big thumper, which I think comes out the port side um, and things like that. So that's the difference. And the other thing as well, we get the little pylons here, which go on for where the wheels, um, the outrigger wheels on the wings, these go on the front of it which is the pylon for the actual sidewinder missiles on a harry on the RAF version apart from that it's exactly the same as the other one so if you want to have a look exactly how this kit goes and everything else pop along i think it was an eight part or nine part build i did on this one start to finish um, and you can see how it all goes together it's going to go together exactly the same because it is the same kit after I did mine obviously some time ago, now there's some very nice goodies around which I think will probably fit in this kit exactly the same such as wheel wells and things like that. So it's probably well worth having a look at those. I know now you can get a full cockpit uh, and all the bits and pieces that go with it like that. So that's really, really nice kit. If you haven't done one and you want one in 130 seconds, these actually are very, very nice kits. They go very nicely together. And I know I'm biased because I've done one, but I've seen lots of other guys on the net um, and different forums who have done them as well. I've done absolutely stunning jobs, far better than my one. And it's lovely to see that particular kit. Okay, next up, a bit of a difference for me. Okay, what we've actually got here is some armor. Now, um, something I was going to talk about really is that the price of kits going up and up and up. So I was having a look around at other things. I was talking to some of the guys on the forum and things like that about getting into doing armor. Obviously armor is nothing I've really done before and I'm really out of my depth with it because I'm not up on armor. You can show me an aircraft and nine times out of ten I can tell exactly what it is and what block number it is and everything else. Come to armor, quite frankly, it's got tracky things on it and looks dirty. It's a tank, you know, but obviously you get different versions like aircraft. 
you know, obviously it looks the same to me, but I'm sure a lot of you armor guys will know obviously all the little differences and changes they did as they went through and everything else. So I haven't got a clue. So don't, you know, berate me for sort of saying, because I haven't got a clue what I'm on about. And the last armor kit I built, to be honest, was a Tamiya um, Abrams tank, which sort of dropped together very nicely, but wasn't very special at the same time. I did have a quick look at this one, to be honest. This isn't my first look in here. I did have a sneak peek just because I really couldn't help it. But what we've got down here is, I suppose I'll tell you what it is first, see it shows how I'm out. This is the dragon ones. Now these dragons, what they call smart kit, which have this banding here. Now I'm told, you know, reliably that these have all the goodies built into them already. So you don't need much in the way of aftermarket stuff because it has a lot that comes with it. Okay, the only thing I am told is, is that replacement barrels are the way to go. But as I say, I haven't got any of those. But we're starting off here with um, the German Panzer. This is the one which is April to May 1943, um, and it's the G type. I'm not going to try and pronounce names of things because I haven't got a clue. What I found really nice in these armor kits is, is this type of stuff. Magic tracks, which I'm told lock together really easy. Um, there's no fiddling around with pins and things like that. And they're not horrible rubber ones. So that way you get the sag on the track and everything else like that. Steel wire, which was very, very nice stuff. So it looks like towing cable, things like that. Some nice photo etch parts all around here. Some nice decals as well. We've got a clear parts and a small fret of bits and pieces on here, which is a very nice touch because they're all kept out of the way. They're all kept nice and flat. They're not floating around the bag, you know, around the box getting dented and all the rest of it. So I do like that. So I say, it's as far as I got, I haven't been in it any further. So we've got down in here, we've got our instructions, which I do hate it in this format because it takes up half your desk. I prefer them to be thinner. That would be my only thing. Obviously, because there is lots of different versions of this kit, you've got a lot of blued out stuff, which means it's not relevant to this particular type. But going through this, I have to say, it does look very, very nice. Um, we've got some fantastic detail and it does go on forever. And each exploded part goes on and on and on. And the showing the way that these guns go together and all the bits and pieces, it just tends to be, it just goes on and on, literally, and on and on, like I am now. Looking at all the parts, I have to say I haven't seen any sign of flash, mist mold, scratching, horrible bits anywhere. Everything looks extremely, extremely crisp. You know, even down to some of the fine riveting and everything else, a lot better than even I can say I found on aircraft kits of a lot larger scale. It seems to be incredibly well done. And you do have to say to yourself, look at it all, absolute tons and tons to this. You know, it really, really does go on. So. As I say, I haven't done one of these and I can't really go through and tell you exactly what it's like because I've got nothing to compare it with and not being too up on these things. But what I will say is just recently I've been buying kits and things and working on kits which are costing a lot of money. And to be honest, we're talking 148 scale now, aircraft this big, which are now costing, with a few little extras, 100 quid a pop, okay? If you're doing things like that Phantom, you're looking at 200 pound a pop. This particular kit has got a retail price of 50 quid and as I say, apparently, apart from sticking a barrel on the end of it, because you've got the magic track system and this photo etch and all the other bits and pieces, you can put a barrel on this and you're gonna have a kit which is far more detailed, does a lot more into it and a lot more sort of, you know, detail with all these bits and pieces and everything else than any aircraft is gonna have and for 50 quid. So I have to say, I am looking forward to this. I will be building it. I am gonna make a complete hash of it, no doubt. So I'll be asking you guys in the forum to keep me on the old straight and narrow for what I'm doing to this. But I have to say, if you're looking for a bargain of the week, these actual, these dragon kits, these smart kits do seem to be really, really good value for money. Okay, so there's the reviews. Um, I suppose a lot of people have been asking, and especially myself, I see the price of kits and I've you know touched upon it in there. And I know I said this before about the price of kits and the things like that and going up and it... I know it's starting to grate on a lot of people, especially when you see the latest releases from Hasegawa coming through now. And, and some of their reboxes are 75 quid a time, you know, these be 30 quid. Um, you know, really it's beginning to bite on the hobby, I think, you know, literally. If it's a new, new tooled kit, I can understand it. But now we're into the situation where, um, Tamiya now their new Spitfire is 135 pounds you know and I'm, you know, it's only this big um, so and a lot of people were saying to me um, just before I went away about it and the prices of it and everything else and you know really at the end of the day 
we've all got stashes. Yeah, I've got one down the side here, up here, and I've got kits in there that are when they were cheap. Like I've got Hasegawa Hornet staring at me there, and I think I paid twenty seven pound for that brand new belt sort of six years ago. Um, and I've got other things up there. The other things also that which should help out is have a look to see if somebody's reboxed a particular kit. For this example as well, things like um, Revel of Germany do tend to rebox a lot of Hasegawa kits. So have a look. Certainly their Harriers. Hasegawa Harriers at the moment, horrendous price, £40, £50 pound a time, but you can get reboxes for £25, pound, which is the same kit and everything, obviously just different decals from companies like Rebel and things like that. Another bargain one, if you're looking for kits which have got recessed panel lines and they're all there, you know, is certainly Academy. Academy does a good range of kits that are certainly a lot cheaper than some of the others, or they are at the moment, because I don't know, they can also go through the roof later. And certainly, you know, I know people say things like Trumpeter now, all well, theirs are up near, you know, £100, everything else. As I say, in the review, we spoke about it in the review, but we've got the Harrier here, the GR7. You know, it's best part of an £80 kit, obviously the cheaper online and everything else. But if you take your time and do a little bit of scratch building like we did around the engine, it's something that really will last you a couple of months' work doing it and have a very nice presentable kit at the end of it. It does seem to be now that the 148 scale kits are getting more expensive and going up a lot quicker than the 132s. You know, and the 172s now are shifting up in price, but the 132s, if you're pretty frugal and you look around, you can get some real bargains and things like that. Also, go around the net don't just go to the first place you see it. Do a Google search, have a look around for it. Sometimes it's even cheaper to buy direct from places like Korea and, every, and Japan and things like that and Hong Kong and bring them over. Still works out 10, 20 pound cheaper. Okay, you've got to work, wait a couple of weeks, but most of us are going to bung it in our stash anyway and then build it at some point. So I won't worry too much about things like that. From our point of view as a company, we've got something really, really exciting coming up, and I've just ordered 10,000 of something, um, and that's just all you're going to get there. I'm not going to say any more, but we've just ordered 10,000 uh, of a certain item that's going to be coming to us, which we'll be selling soon. So but I'm really excited about that one, something I've been working on a long, long time. Um, so as I say, no point badgering me, I'm just keeping that just to keep you all on edge a little bit, but hopefully that will come off within the next sort of four to eight weeks uh, and things like that, but we're quite excited about that here. That's really about it. I know I've got to catch up now with doing the group build videos, uh, or the SIG videos certainly, for the Battle of Britain one, and then obviously we've got to do the Phantom one. Battle of Britain one, to be honest, I finished it just before we went away, but I've got to check it, make sure everyone's names are the same, because if I don't, I know I've got it wrong somewhere along the time. It takes a little bit of time and juggling to get the names and everything come out in the right sequencing uh, on the video. So I will get that done, and then they'll obviously the forum members, you'll see them next week. Uh, they'll be up there, and then obviously I'll put them on the new show for everybody else and things like that. So that's really about it. I'm going to carry on now with this little one, get that one out of the way over the next two days and then on Monday I'm back to work and going to go on with these two. I'm going to break them down like we usually do as so I'm going to do hopefully do two bits of them a week and things like that and work our way through. So something for the armour guys out of the box and we've got a super detailed one as well coming up. Happy modelling everyone, have a great weekend, until next week, take care.